that uh, you know it took so lo so long to build, and you know how how would Thomas Jefferson feel about the the republic that you know what he spent blood, sweat, and tears to create? How would he feel about the presidency of Donald J. Trump? Of Trump, he. On certain terms, I feel like you would agree, but only in the most basic, uh, fundamental prim uh, principles of conservatism. On other, a uh, whole lot of his other values, Jefferson would very wholeheartedly disagree. He was a humanitarian at heart, whereas Donald Trump has kind of had this whole philosophy of hatred toward a great number of uh, citizens of the United States, and not only current citizens, but future citizens as well. Jefferson himself, one of uh, his most uh, impactful, I guess one of his actions during his life, it's written on his gravestone, is that he wrote the Virginia Charter for uh, religious freedom. And one of Trump's main running points currently, specifically with the prevalence of ISIS and these recent terror attacks, is that he's going to kick all the Muslims, or not kick all of them out, but keep any new ones from coming in, and like you said, force those currently here to register uh, in some sort of database to keep track of all their actions and all that, which, I mean, so going like, specifically with Jefferson runs completely contrary to the course of much of the latter part of his life. He said he's going to go to the mosques and check the mosques and the mosques register. He said that's what we're going to be looking for. No other politician would ever say that. But he's not no, really a serious politician. <laughs> he's not really a politician. He's a serious politician. So, this has all been so hopeful. <laughs> Paint us a picture of America with Trump as president. What, what does the world look, what does America look like in a couple years if Trump wins? I'm not really sure. I, I don't know the future. It, he could end up being a very effective president if he surrounds himself with a good cabinet, a uh, good vice president, people who can kind of hold him down, and keep him from doing whatever crazy idea pops in his head. On the other hand, if a lot of the current platforms he's running on are implemented, you'll see detriment to the United States economy. I believe we'll lose credit with every other uh, nation in the world in terms of how we treat our prisoners and his uh, policies on torture. Um, as far as uh, the military goes, one of his most recent statements was that he actually potentially favored using tactical nuclear weapons against ISIS in Syria and Iraq and possibly against Russia and Ukraine. So he either could be a very effective president, and we look back on this with, uh, I mean, I guess a little bit of pride, or he could start World War III. So, so. <laughs> oh, hey, what happens if he drops okay. a nuclear bomb on There's no real middle ground there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Not really sure. So, um, from what you know of Trump, the, if there are any issues that he's actually been consistent on what is one way that my life would change practically? What would one practical effect on my life be if Trump was, to the best of your knowledge, obviously? Yeah, yeah, taxes, he wants to simplify the tax bracket, and um, I, I think Andrew knows the percentage more, but you would pay a less percentage, and he wants to tax the rich a, a less percentage, but still more, but not as much as he's. Paying. Yeah, he's actually proposed a uh, kind of a four pronged approach to that. If you make below thirty, or I believe it's twenty-five thousand dollars as a single filer, or fifty thousand as a married couple, then you wouldn't pay any income tax whatsoever. And then after that, if you make, uh, I believe it's below thirty-five thousand, except do it. So we have the numbers here. No. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, start at zero percent, like I just mentioned, and then go up to ten. Uh, not one hundred percent sure on the income levels, but they're not incredibly important anyway. They go up to ten percent. Uh, 20 percent, and the highest level he has is 25 uh, percent uh, as far as income tax goes, and that's for uh, head of household filers that make over $300,000 every year. That's across the board. That's the highest tax bracket he has. So practically, like Mr. Harvey said, we're paying less income tax. Yeah, that's yeah, that's one of the practical outcomes of uh, a Trump presidency. I thought that was a bad thing. That's on that particular platform. I actually agree with him. You don't see any detrimental effect in public services? As far as the roads? Yeah, I, okay. I right. really don't. I do agree with supply-side economics. I think that it would work if it were implemented in the long run and not 
uh, obstructed with inordinate military spending, as in the Reagan presidency. Um, you could just lower income taxes across the board, lower corporate taxes. You'll see an increase in production and employment. Uh, and through that, while percentage-wise you'd be taking in less, your actual revenue would be a whole lot more since the pool you'd be taxing from would be much greater. So where does he mostly want to cut from the government spending to help make up for the lowering taxes? Uh, this is Healthcare and uh, also uh, when we're putting troops and stuff in other countries, he wants to make, like I said, for them pay so that. But he uh, has no authority to make them pay. Exactly. That's and if we're the, and if we're the, and if we're the policemen of the world, as he said, we can't close our Air Force base in Germany. We can't close our base in Okinawa. We can't, I mean. He believes he's able to strong on countries like Mexico to. They're broke. Into paying for <laughs> well, with certain countries, he does have a certain degree of leverage. Like with Mexico, I know Justin mentioned earlier, there are $22 million, or no, I'm sorry, billion dollars in remittances sent back to Mexico annually by illegal workers here in the United States. Uh, one of the primary ways he wants to influence them into paying for the wall is by amending the Patriot Act so that wire transfers cannot be completed uh, without a legal form of identification. So in that way, an illegal immigrant wouldn't be able to send back whatever extra earnings they have to their family in Mexico, which is uh, kind of the current way that system operates right now. If we amend the Patriot Act that way, and all of a sudden all the Ill illegal immigrants here aren't able to send their wages back, you would see an immediate response from Mexico. I don't know if it would necessarily be positive or effective at all. You would essentially threaten starting a trade war. Yeah. He says if you don't do what he wants, then he won't do business with you. Now, that's, like you said, not going to work with every nation. We don't have billions of dollars in remittances sent to Russia or Japan or really anybody else. So that, I believe, he just relies on his own negotiating prowess. So, Justin? Yes. you going to vote for him or not? Uh, this is how I think about it. If yes or no? It comes down. Yes, yes or no? Are you going to vote for him or not? Down. Uh, yes. If it no. comes down to Hillary and Trump, I will vote for Trump. Why? Because I just think that that you not run the country to the ground as much as I would could, or I would just write it in Mr. Good for you. <laughs> you can't. You can't write it anymore. No, you can't write me in. I'm only thirty-four. You can write Mrs. Kennedy. There you are. Oh, for sure. There we go. Max. That solves that. Max for VP. Yes. Thank you guys.